Hello guys, I'm Peter from Builder Boeing. My next project is going to be the conversion of this uh, weather radar panel. This is uh, from a real aircraft, not the 737NG, but perhaps an earlier version or some other aircraft of that era, like this 727 perhaps, I don't know, I haven't found out. But the functions are more or less the same as on the 737NG and that's why I can use it in my simulator. Let me just walk through the switches here and then I can show you the inside uh, afterwards. I've already taken the covers off. Here you can select different modes. And uh, I don't think the order here of the different modes are the same on the NG, but that doesn't matter because I can just map them so that when I turn it to normal here, uh, it sends, uh, the simulator knows that it should go in normal mode and stand by and off. And I don't think that's, that's the same functions here, but the ones I'm gonna use are here, so that's that's just great. The test uh, position over here, you need to pull the switch out and then you can turn it. Let me show you from the side here. I hope you're able to see this. So you turn it here and then when you come to here, you're not able to go any further, then you pull it out and then you can continue. And you can actually see right there, there's a small tap. I'll just turn the switch a bit. You can see the tap there at the end again. And that goes and that small, I don't, I, I don't know the correct word for it. Let's see if I can get this out again, like that. Here is like a small um, channel. Do you call it channel? I don't know. That the tap runs in. And once the tap gets to right there, you can see there's a small change in color from there to there. It's darker here it's because there's a small piece of metal there. So once the tap comes to there, it stops, then you pull it up, and it can continue onto that part. That's how this pull to twist or pull to, to turn works. And uh, that's actually quite, quite simple, but very useful if you are planning on doing that in your own cockpit. It could be the starter switches, for, for example. Just have a tap that needs to be pulled up to continue to travel to the test position. The gain potentiometer here is more or less the same as on the NG. The only difference is here the auto is at maximum, whereas in the NG it's in the minimum position. One thing I noticed here is when I turn this, and it takes quite a bit of force to turn it. Did you hear that click? Let me just put it in auto again. Here it just freely moves up and down. Once it goes into auto, it clicks again. That to me sounds like there's some sort of switch here that um, needs to be activated. I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know there was a switch, but apparently uh, putting it in auto, there's a switch. The antenna tilt here goes from minus 15 to 10. Pretty straightforward, nothing special here. On the back, you can see that it's a Gables, and I don't know if you're able to see here, Gables uh, model number G1945 or 1945, and the serial number has been scratched out, but the serial number is 34, which is a ridiculously low serial number, <laughs> 34. The inside, the inside is a bit more interesting. Uh, here we have the rotary switch, which is pretty straightforward, nothing special there. This spring here controls the pull to uh, turn function. So when you pull the switch and release it again, that spring pulls it back. The wiring is just out of this world. Look at these very nice small bends and it all gathers here with small ties all the way up. Pretty straightforward, but very nice. I'm not gonna do anything special about that. Over here we have the potentiometer, which is a, let's see if I can get that in focus and the exposure up a bit again. It's very dark in this video. Uh, potentiometer, not much going on here, 2.5K. Um, I only see two wires coming into the potentiometer and uh, that puzzles me a bit. These wires here, they run down to the switch as well, but I don't see three wires as required in a potentiometer or two wires for that switch function down here. So I'll have a look into what's going on there. What really puzzled me when I opened this was the antenna tilt. This 
looks like a motor to me. And I'm just wondering what is the motor doing on this antenna tilt selector? Uh, at least I was not aware that this is able to turn on itself by command from the aircraft, uh, but it appears so when you have a stepper motor or some sort of motor here. Another strange thing are these gears. Now, I'm going to turn it from full maximum to uh, full minimum to full maximum tilt and just notice how little that that gear turns. When I turn it here, it almost doesn't turn at all. And that's just strange because I thought if you had a stepper motor here that should move that, you would like it to move as much as possible to be able to get as precise a precision as possible here. On the other hand, there's no potentiometer. There's just this. That's what's, that was there. So somehow the signal from that antenna tilt is also transmitted into why these wheels or uh, gears into this unit. When converting this, I'm just going to get rid of that because uh, I cannot use it in the simulator and I'm not able to get a reading from the uh, from the switch here uh, because that's in the way. So I think I'll just have to, to throw that away. Furthermore, the cannon plug here on the back, this is the cannon plug, that goes as well. I'm not able to find uh, the corresponding connectors unless I want to pay like $100 for each connector and no. That's not going to happen. And one final thing that I'm, I am considering, I haven't decided it yet, so I might still be able to survive this video, but I am considering changing the backlighting from the original um, aircraft bulbs, as you can see here and here, and over here as well, and change them with LEDs. I know it's a death sin among uh, many people, to take these lovely bulbs out because they have a fantastic glow and they look very nice and uh, they are the real thing. It's the look that you want in your cockpit. The reason I'm considering uh, taking them out is that the rest of my aircraft uh, panels are using LEDs and uh, I have LED dimmers for these and they're running on 12 volts and this is five. So I'm not able to control the dimming if I uh, use these light bulbs. And I'm just considering how many times I'm dimming my pedestal. That's more or less never, but um, that's the reason for keeping them. And then of course, because it is the original light bulbs. So I might end up keeping them. One thing to be aware if you are considering the same death sin as I am, is if you have a small cross somewhere here on your panel, and I think most of the overhead panels at least have that cross, small like an X or a cross, here, your backlight function is a bit different. Here I have light bulbs lining up the plate here. The light bulbs are mounted onto this metal plate. But if you have that small cross there, the lightning happens inside this front plate and the cross marks where the connector is to the rest of the panel. So in case you have panels with a small cross, you're not able to change the light bulbs. You just need to be aware of that. You have to live with the original fantastic backlighting as the panels provide. The more and more I talk about this, I think I'm just gonna keep the light bulbs. Let's see how this turns out. I will um, make a small post on my blog about the conversion itself, but for now, I just wanted to show you what the inside of this aircraft panel looks like, and it's a bit more complex than I thought when I opened it. I hope this was useful to you in some way. I'm Peter from Bilderberg. You guys take care. Bye-bye.